ever wondered why the wall and flooring below your kitchen sink become damp and smell bad even if there's no leak from the faucet and drain systems? This is a caulking strip, and in this video, I'm going to show you how and why it's an easier and better alternative to grout, plumber's putty, or even silicone as a waterproofing sealant for a specific area of your kitchen sink. To help you appreciate the easy fix I'll show you in a minute, we need to review the parts of a kitchen sink system relevant to our topic. Starting with the sink basin, which ironically isn't the focus of this DIY video. But around this basin is the countertop. And if the countertop is butt up against the wall, that wall is and should be covered by a backsplash. A backsplash is just a fancy word for any material that protects a wall from, well, splashes. The most common backsplash options are ceramic or porcelain tiles and stainless steel because of their water-resistant properties. However, a common point of failure is the seam or tiny gap where the countertop and the backsplash meet, especially the area near the basin. Because as water hits the wall, it slides down and collects at the base. And this is why it is incredibly important that the gap is completely waterproof. Otherwise, water will just continue to slide downwards all the way to the flooring underneath the sink which will eventually cause all sorts of problems like mini floods, a breeding ground for roaches and mosquitoes, germs, and foul odor. Several years ago, we hired someone to retile the entire countertop because the old-fashioned tiles were worn out, stained, or chipped. Overall, he did a good job giving the countertop a more modern finish. The problem was, just like with the new tiles, he used grout to seal the gap between the countertop and the backsplash. At that time, I had zero knowledge on plumbing and thought grout was the standard filler across any part of the sink. I didn't even know that grout is cement-based and therefore not waterproof, isn't flexible, and cracks under constant movement or vibration. In short, the grout didn't even last half a year. Eventually, we hired a plumber who, in contrast, used caulk. Caulk is a waterproof chemical substance used for filling seams or gaps. It usually comes in a tube and is applied through a tool called a caulking gun, which looks like this. And yes, it takes a certain skill to end up with a straight and crisp line using this tool. While the caulk endured for several years, it too eventually became brittle and broke apart. Because that's life, nothing lasts forever. Fast forward to two years ago where I took matters in my own hands and did the repair myself. At the time, I decided to use silicone sealant instead which is a more durable waterproofing substance. It also comes in a tube and is administered through a caulking gun. But I wasn't too worried because I knew silicone sealant is translucent when dry. This meant my lack of skills using a caulking gun to bead a crisp straight line wouldn't be that obvious. Everything was perfect and I was so proud of myself, up until a year ago when the ugly truth began to show. As it turns out, silicone when exposed to a constant humidity and wetness, is a powerful magnet for molds. And the more mold spread across my silicone lining, the uglier and uglier the entire sink became. So here I am today, about to correct that mistake by exploring a quicker, cleaner, and cheaper solution. A PVC-based self-adhesive caulking strip. It's so simple to use, it doesn't even require a special skill. Although I will say that before we can use it, we must prepare our surface properly. And we'll start by removing this yucky silicone sealant. Now, I'll be honest with you. If you used silicone sealant like I did, you have your work cut out for you. Because this bad boy clings on surfaces really hard. It's going to be one tough operation, but with patience, is perfectly doable. So in this removal process, I'm going to show you a combination of common tools I used to completely remove the silicone sealant. Starting with a paint scraper. However, there were spots where my scraper was too flimsy for the job, so I resorted to something more sturdy like a flathead screwdriver. This actually worked pretty well. Thank you. 
Another struggle I had was some sections of the silicone was too slippery for me to grip and pull out. So sometimes I had to use a pair of pliers. That did the trick. So, it took me about 30 minutes to scrape off the silicone sealant, but we're not done yet. Since when I touch the sink and wall edges, I still feel bumps, which is evidence that some silicone is still desperately clinging onto the surfaces. We're gonna do something about that in a minute, but first, we have a minor side job. This is a loose sinkhole cover. Why did it become loose? Because rust has eaten its toggle bolt underneath. Certain sinks like this will have four sinkholes. One is provisioned for the cold water handle, another for the hot water handle, another for a sprayer hose, and the last one is for the faucet itself. But ever since we switched to a single handle faucet tower like this, we had to cover the sinkholes with these. Otherwise, there will be three big holes for water to leak through. Now, this is what a new sinkhole cover looks like, and it's super easy to install. We'll come back to this after we have properly cleaned our surfaces. With an 80 grit sandpaper, we'll wet sand the sink and the wall. This step gets rid of the little silicone bumps I spoke about earlier so that our caulking strip can have a smooth, flat surface to stick on later. Then we brush off or vacuum the solid particles. Then clean with a damp cloth or sponge. Now, let's wet sand the rust off the sinkholes. Wipe off the loose rust and metal shavings. And this time, wet sand with a 400 grit sandpaper in a circular motion. This will erase the streaks produced by the rougher 80 grit sandpaper we used. Then I'll do the same procedure on the left sinkhole, which I discovered also came loose with rust. So after about 15 minutes of sanding and wiping, this is how the sink looks like. I'd say it almost appears brand new. I don't even see traces of silicone, molds, and rust anywhere. See that black line? That's not mold. It's actually the gap between the countertop and the wall. Okay, so let's jump to the last step of our surface preparation. We spray some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and wipe the surface. This does two things. One, we get rid of any contaminant like grease and metal shavings. And two, we ensure the surface is super dry since alcohol evaporates very quickly. Finally, we can now measure the length of the sink, which in this case is 37 inches. And bring out our caulking strip. This special tape is made of PVC, so it's more resistant to molds. It does come in a variety of colors, and I chose gray because it's the closest color between our stainless sink and the white backsplash. See this crease along the middle? This has a purpose. But first, we cut our 37 inches of caulking strip.
Then we pinch the strip inwards along the crease. I found it easier to do this by dangling the tape and sliding my fingers downwards. From one end, we remove a portion of the adhesive cover and stick on one edge of the sink, making sure that the crease is aligned with the gap between the sink and the backsplash. Then we pull the adhesive cover some more and press the exposed area with our fingers lightly. Just keep on doing the pull and press method until we reach the other end of the sink. After that, we retrace from beginning to end and this time with a harder pressure. I cut and finessed this edge because the surface here was a bit uneven. Remember, our goal here is to cover any and all gaps and holes. With waterproofing sealant left over from a previous self-watering planter project, I bead around the sinkholes. Now, I'm ready to install this new cover. Since I'm already using waterproofing sealant, I don't need the toggle nut and the washer. Actually, this washer is useless since it's the same size as the hole. I need something bigger than the hole to begin with. Let's drop the covers neatly at the center of the holes and press the middle with one finger. This ensures that there's even pressure all around. Finally, using a paper towel with rubbing alcohol, we wipe off the excess sealant that oozed out. Here's a quick look on our before. And here's after. If you think that a caulking strip is a solution for you, check out the description below where I included product links that you can consider. These caulking strips or tapes do come in a variety of colors and prices from different manufacturers. So please, do your due diligence before deciding. Now, this might not look like a high-end solution, but I was able to save a ton of money and I did it on my own without any special tool. Even you can do this. This is Handyman007. Thanks for watching, and please do share this with others who you think can benefit from it. And, and, I'll see you in my other videos.